Starting your first job as an engineer after so many years of studying can be daunting. Before I started working, I had a lot of worries and no idea what it was gonna be like. And I was certainly in for a wild ride, <laughs> but not in the ways I expected. Some of the things I was super worried about ended up being completely irrelevant, while other things I never thought about before ended up being really difficult. So let me share with you what I learned in my first year as a full-time engineer. Hey and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a German mechanical engineer based in Sweden. A little over one year ago I finished my master's degree in mechanical engineering and started working my first full-time job as an engineer in a battery production company. So today I thought I would look back on this past year and share with you the things that I wish someone had told me beforehand. <laughs> the first thing I learned is that it's not like a student job at all. One of my biggest worries before I started working full-time was that it would be too easy and boring. The reason I was worried about this in the first place was that at all of the jobs I had as a student I always started out learning a lot and feeling really engaged in the work and then after maximum three to six months I started to get really bored and felt like I had already learned pretty much 90% of what there was to learn at this job and I wanted to move on to something new and switching your job every three to six months might work as a student but I was well aware that you cannot pull that off in the long run however as it turned out things are a little bit different at a full-time engineering job compared to a student job. This is because the scope of a full-time job is much larger than a student job. Duh. You will likely be working on more than one project at a time, maybe even 10 projects. You will be talking to a lot more people and departments, get to make more decisions by yourself and be able to use and develop a much wider range of skills. Of course, I can't talk about all engineering jobs here, but I can tell you that there are in fact engineering jobs that don't become boring after three to six months or even after one to two years. So now that we're no longer worried about being bored, let's move on to the second thing I learned is that the learning process has only just started. In university I had this image that I would learn pretty much everything I needed to know as an engineer during my studies and then just apply it on the job and that couldn't be further from the truth. There's hardly any knowledge that I gained from my studies that I can directly apply to my job. I'm not at all saying that university was useless or anything like that. There are a lot of things that I learned that still find their way into my job and that make me a better engineer like an understanding of basic mechanical principles, how to solve problems in a structured way, and basic knowledge of different engineering disciplines. But I am saying that the learning process is not over after engineering school, not even close. I constantly have to learn new things, be it learning about new types of equipment, networks, data management, purchasing contracts and warranty periods, how much things cost, quality management, and loads of other things that are all related to engineering, but that are not nearly taught detailed enough in engineering school Goal, to be able to just apply them on the job. So the skill of teaching myself new things, which I learned during my engineering studies, or rather taught myself during my engineering studies, is probably the most important skill for my engineering career. As long as I can teach myself new things quickly and independently, I'm gonna be just fine, even if I didn't learn something that I need in engineering school or don't remember it anyway. <laughs> now, the third thing. The third, oh my God, I cannot, the third thing. Uh, third thing I learned. The third thing I learned from my first year as a full-time engineer is that it will feel like you have no free time but the more you think that the more it will be true. Working 40 hours a week can feel like a lot when you're starting out and even later. Not just because of the amount of hours but also because of the amount of flexibility you lose compared to university. At uni I probably also studied around 40 hours per week on average. Sometimes 20 hours, sometimes 60 hours but on average probably around 40 hours a week but I was much more flexible in when I could do that. Now at my job I still have some flexibility flexibility in when I decide to work but I am expected to be available during office hours and I have to attend a lot of meetings every day so that pretty much dictates when I need to work and that felt really overwhelming in the beginning to be honest because I didn't realize just how much freedom I had as a student and how little I would have at a full-time job but I also found that dwelling on the feeling that I have no free time makes it even worse because if I assume that I have no free time then I won't make plans for that free time that I can look forward to and if I have no plans for my free time, then the most attractive thing I can do is 
work more or spend too much time doing chores or maybe watch Netflix, which is fun sometimes, but not the only thing I want to be doing with my life. So if you start out with the viewpoint that you have no free time, you will allow your work to creep into your free time a lot more. And the number one thing that helped me to combat that view and gain back some free time was to start a hobby. This seems counterintuitive, but you gotta actually define what you want to have more time for. It should be something that really inspires and motivates you. For me, I started making YouTube videos to have something to look forward to in my free time, which then motivates me to get my work done early enough so that I can keep my evenings and weekends relatively free and actually have time to write the scripts and film the videos and edit them and so on. And it also helped me come up with ways to reduce the time I spend on other things that I don't really like to do. Some of the things that I found to help me gain back some free time is to meal prep and bulk buy my groceries as much as possible so that I don't have to cook and do groceries every day. I also like to batch all of my household work on one day of the weekend, like laundry and cleaning the apartment so that I don't have to think about it any of the other days. On days when I'm working from home, I like to work out in my lunch break, either go for a run or quickly go to the gym, which not only saves me time for a workout later but it also makes me feel less stressed and helps me to focus better in the afternoon and then get my work done on time to have a free evening and I realized that it helps me to get up earlier than I need to for my job and do what I want to do first thing in the morning for example I do the bulk of my script writing and editing in the morning before work because nothing can get in the way and I start the day out with something that I really love doing which also by the way helps me go to bed earlier if I know that I can only do this if I get to that early enough to actually be rested <laughs> to get up that early. Okay, the next thing I learned, number four, is results matter, not working hours, even if it seems that way. I think at every company there are probably people bragging about how many hours they work, how they never take breaks, and that they even work on the weekends. And I guess to some extent you have to play this game of showing that you work a lot, but ultimately what your company and your manager get value from is not the hours themselves, but the results you achieve in that time. So you can easily be way more productive than your colleagues who work much longer hours than you. And here's how. The first thing you need to do is to set the right priorities. Chances are that you will be assigned more tasks and responsibilities than you could possibly complete in your regular working hours or even in double your working hours. So you can either just put your head down and try to get as many of them done as possible or you can try to figure out which ones are the most important for you to complete. I prefer to do the latter and only revert to crazy working hours. <laughs> in emergency situations. So how do you make sure to set the right priorities? First of all, you need to ask your manager what your priorities should be, or even better, what your manager's priorities are, and then how your projects and tasks fit into those. And then once you are aware of the overarching goals and priorities, you need to make active decisions about what you want to be working on every single day. I do that by taking 10 minutes in the morning or the evening before, whenever I really have my sh together. And in those 10 minutes, I will think about what the three to five most important tasks are that I need to complete that day. And if there's really big tasks that I want to accomplish that I really need to have some focus time for, I will schedule them into my calendar so that I can reserve that focus time to work on them. And the second thing you can do to be more productive is to not give into hustle culture of skipping breaks and sleep and weekends and actually take that time to recharge so that you can focus better, make better decisions and stick to your priorities. Like actually stick to them and not let something urgent that pops up throw you off completely. Hopefully you have a manager who agrees with taking regular breaks and relaxing on weekends and sleeping eight hours a night and not doing any of that all nighter BS. But if you don't, you might want to look for a new job. Or, you didn't hear this from me, just schedule your emails to be sent out at different times to appear to be working crazy, <laughs> crazy hours while you're actually just being a responsible adult who is productive during working hours and recharging in their free time. And the fifth and final learning is it's just a job. Don't get me wrong, I love my job and my colleagues and I'm really happy where I'm at, but still, it is just a job. You don't have to sell your soul, you don't have to be friends with everyone and not everything needs to be perfect for you to be happy. Of course it helps, but I think we need to get over that expectation a little bit in order to be happy. I certainly had to get over that. When it's your first job, your first team, your first manager, it's really easy to get attached to that situation and not want anything to change 
ever. But things will change, people will leave, new people will join and teams will be restructured. I was really happy with my first team and my first manager and then suddenly our team got split and I was really upset about it and felt quite unmotivated for a while. But I think I needed to <laughs> experience this change to grow and gain back some autonomy, meaning that I'm not relying on the situation being a certain way, but that I feel empowered to make the best of it. I'm of course not done with that development, I'm still working on becoming more self-sufficient, but I certainly care much less about my formal work situation and can adapt just a little bit better to changes. <laughs> I'm not saying stay in the terrible situation, but differentiate between a situation that is truly bad and one that just isn't perfect. There's always gonna be tasks you need to do that you don't like and people you need to work with who you maybe wouldn't hang out with in your free time and changes that you would have preferred not to happen, but that doesn't mean you can't be happy. I mean, it's completely normal to feel vulnerable to your first job and I think it's part of the process of starting out to develop a little bit of thicker skin and be less attached to people and situations in your work work life. Now if you want to learn more things that surprise me about working as an engineer, you might want to check out my video on five things I wish I knew before becoming a mechanic engineer. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Bye bye!